Okay, just thought I'd do a video showing some really quick and simple scriptures on the new birth, spiritual regeneration, and a changed life after salvation. All of which are scriptural concepts, something that the easy believers heretics and the self-righteous lordship salvation, conditional security, sinless perfection heretics both don't understand. The new birth after salvation, the Holy Ghost coming in and cleaning your life up. Not you doing it to keep yourself saved or stay saved by works, which is what the conditional security Roman Catholic heretics believe, because conditional security, uh, lordship salvation, it just stems from Roman Catholicism and Calvinism too. Uh, it's a Roman Catholic heresy and a Calvinist heresy too. And also, the easy believers heretics also don't understand this too, because they want to live in sin. And that's true. I mean, there are some easy believers that don't that do preach hard against sin, absolutely. But most of the ones I've encountered just want to live in sin, but want to basically uh, tolerate their sin and and you know watch Hollywood or watch um, listen to satanic rock music or whatever. You name it, they do it. But some some quick scriptures on the new birth and spiritual regeneration and change life after salvation. Ephesians chapter two verses one to three. Turn there in your King James Bibles, Ephesians 2, verses 1 to 3. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, in the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, in whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Notice the key word there, were. You know, we were this way. We were the children of wrath. It says, who in time past, what happened? There was a change, you know, who were in dead in trespasses and sins. They had a changed life. They were this way, but they were no, no longer uh, walking according to the course of the world, fulfilling, fulfilling the lust of the flesh, you know, being the children of wrath by nature. They were no longer like that. They had to change. For the proof of that, jump down to Ephesians chapter 2, early, later in this chapter. Ephesians 2 verses 8 to 10. Good kick at the self-righteous lordship salvation, conditional security, sinless perfection heretics, and also at the easy believers heretics as well. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 to 10. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Boom, kicked the self-righteous conditional security heretics because it's not of yourselves, not of works, or else you can boast. It's a gift from God. However, you're as workmanship created for good works. Kick at the easy believers heretics. Other good scripture. Uh, Titus chapter 3, verses 3 to 7. Turn there in the King James Bibles. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful, and hating one another. But after the, that the kindness and love of God our Savior towards man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed abundantly on us, or which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Another good, another good kick at the conditional security and easy believers heretics. Because, you see, they were doing these things with foolish, disobedient, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice, envy, hateful, and hate, and that kind of stuff. They were doing that. But look what happened. God saved them. But then also, God, or uh, Paul under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, decides to kick the, the after kicking the easy believers, he decides to kick the, the self-righteous conditional security heretics, when he says, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy and grace. Goes on with that. So, like the other Ephesians 2 verses 8-10, first half kicks the easy believers, second half kicks the self-righteous sinless perfection heretics, verses 3-4 to four kicks the easy believers heretics, verses 5-7 to seven, of Titus chapter 3 kicks the self-righteous uh, sinless perfection conditional security heretics. Interesting how he condemns both of them. But you see neither one of them understand the concept of the new birth and a changed life after salvation. Another good scripture, 1 Peter chapter First Peter chapter 4 verses 1 to 5. Really strong scripture proving the new birth. 
For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that suffered in the flesh, for he that hath suffered in the flesh, hath ceased from, ceased from sin, that he should no longer live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of man, but to the will of God. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles, when we walked in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, reveling, revilings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries, wherein they think it strange that you run not with them to the shame, to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you, who shall give an account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead. Interesting verse 4. They'll think it's strange that, you're not, that you run not with them to excess of riot, speaking evil of you. You see, when you get saved, when you have that changed life, you know, your old friends who are still living according to the flesh, they're going to think you're weird. They're going to say, wait a second, you don't want to go to the bar and get drunk? You don't want to watch that wicked Hollywood movie? You don't want to go to that satanic rock concert? You're weird. I don't want to hang out with you anymore. That's what's going to happen. They're going to think you're strange, and they'll start speaking evil of you. Oh, you see that, that religious fanatic over there? Yeah, he, he's, he's strange. He's weird. He doesn't want to go to the rock concert. He doesn't want to go to the bar. He doesn't want to buy some stuff from that drug dealer just down the street. They're going to, think, they're going to start speaking evil of you because they think you're strange. Interesting. But another good scripture proving a changed life. And also the reaction people will have when that does come. Now, final scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 to 11. Actually, no, there's two more scriptures I want to cover. This is the second last one. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 to 11. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. He mentions a bunch of sins, fornicators, idolatries, mentions sodomites, you know, abusers of themselves of mankind, which is what sodomites homosexuals are thieves covetous but then he says such were some of you they were no there were former sinners who were into idolatry and fornication adultery all that stuff but they were no longer like that such were some of you they changed now the final really strong scripture proving a changed life that i'll show in this video that both the conditional conditional security heretics and the self-righteous uh, which both both are self-righteous, both easy believism and conditional security. It both comes down to self-righteousness and thinking you're a good person. That's what it, what it, really what it comes down to. Second Corinthians chapter five and verse seventeen. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. New creature in Christ, the new birth. Exactly. So, don't be deceived by the conditional security and the lordship salvation. Uh, sinless perfection, and also the easy believe as heretics. Don't be deceived by them. They have not become new creatures. If any man be in Christ, see that condi conditional clause. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. You have the new birth. Old things are passed away. Like over in First Peter chapter 4. You know, you're in excess of, of, of wine, all this other stuff, but then when you old things passed away, your old friends, your, your old friends who will think, oh, you're weird, you're strange, I don't want to hang out with you anymore. Because all things become new. In this verse, Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 ties in perfectly to 1 Peter chapter 4 verses 1 to 5. You have a changed life, and that's something that neither the easy believers heretics nor the conditional security heretics understand, because both of them are self-righteous and prideful, and are trying to justify themselves and think they're a good person. That's what it comes down to. Neither one of them have any understanding of the new birth. Why? Because they haven't experienced it. They're still lost hell on sinners. They're still lost dead in trespasses and sins. Like it says over in Ephesians 2.1. So don't be deceived by either one of those movements, and don't be deceived by those who say, oh, there's no changed life, you can just live however you want. Now, there is eternal security, obviously, okay? You are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Ephesians 1.13, Ephesians 4.30, and 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21 and 22, you're kept by the power of God. You can see that in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to 5. But just because you have eternal security doesn't mean you should just go out and, and fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Because there will be a changed life that will come. And it can take years for some people. It can take a long time. It can take years and years and years of sanctification. But your old desires will eventually pass away. So, anyway, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.